Hey, everybody. Look at where you are. <laughs> oh, you, you silly monkeys. Look at where you ended up. This fine place for a person like you who gives a crap about the British monarchy. Hey, just quick check-in. Did you know we fought a war so that we as Americans would not have to give a crap about the British monarchy? Did you know that? Anyway, I mean, Lizzie Part 2 wasn't that bad as far as they go, but she's a needless expense. And the fact that she churned out two non-like deformed grandchildren is not, it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, oh, but I am, I will say... And this is quite stupid after everything I said. I'm excited for Charles the Third. Excited for it? Excited for Charles the fucking Third? Because the last time we had a King Charles, he was fun as shit. I mean, he wasn't good for the country in a lot of ways. But um, in other ways, he was the most fun king that England ever had like used to drink and party and do cool shit you know anyway <laughs> like something that tells me Charles the third is going to be more like Charles the first who got fucking deposed anyway actually if we could depose Charles the third that'd be fucking sweet does uh does Cromwell have any direct relatives left could we get a Lord Regent? Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, we're here to fucking talk British royalty. Oh, this is Highcraft, by the way. Um, I might be influenced by some chemicals, but I'll never tell. My microphone smells funny on account of what I breathed on it. Anyway, hey, hey, uh, let's do this one. The Grognard World. Oh, Lordy Lou, look at where we are. My goodness, Garcias. What? I said, a uh, what? A uh, 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 what in the world is this? You know, I'm over here. I mean, I'm over here, I said, I said, me, I'm over here trying to, you know, hey now, uh, get wood, you know what I'm saying? I mean that euphemistically, not literally. hey -o. hey -o. ha <laughs> ha, euphemism. Anyway, uh, yeah. In your end, O, oh, ha, give you an entendre. That's what I got from that French chick. She was like, I'm clean. And I'm like, well, then why do I now have entendre? Because someone said I had it. And you're the only one I could have got it from, French chick. And shave your goddamn pits. No one's impressed. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, uh, my goodness. Oh, I. you know what's funny is that, like, I realized one of my um, friendly neighborhood lesbians does not shave her pits because uh, she was wearing a shirt that definitely told that the like gave the answer to that riddle <laughs> does she shave her pits no she don't uh anyway so that's a good time <sighs> would like to get more into the plains to like i don't want to be up in the mountains and i know people i know that i can mine emeralds if i Stay. Oh, by the way, we're playing version 1.85 on this Mamma Jamma. Because, let's be honest, everybody. 
everything since 1.85 has been a little bit of a disappointment, hasn't it? Hasn't it? <laughs> Answer me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm only playing 1.85 because that is the version I started with. And, you know... I feel like uh, I've done so much complaining about the um, caves update. Fuck that update. Anyway, uh, that maybe maybe it would be a good wait. Why don't I'll just make another crafting table? Who gives a fuck at this point? Anyway, um, yeah, I people don't like the way I play Minecraft sober. How, how you think it's going to go to other way. <laughs> like, people are going to be like, oh my god, did you see him do that on, like, this end, that end, and then the middle, like, one at a time, as if you can't just drag those across and make a fucking axe. It's the easiest thing in the world to make. It's just, like, drag these this way, drag that this way, axe make a tea out of the materials done anyway uh so oh yeah let's do a fucking thing instead of just fucking around with this coal shit i gonna grab me a lot of coal while i can because like this is uh 1.85 so you gotta have coal you got to have cool ho 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 um because why would you not because it actually matters not like since the caves update where they killed coal why why would you kill coal like it's been freaking you know 11 years <laughs> As a vital resource, you know, or however long, like, I don't know. I feel like, let's see, I mean, for us, my daughter would have started playing in 2014. So, 2014, that means that, uh, We've now been playing for eight years. Eight years on this Minecraft. It's a lot of lot of hours in this game. Anyway, so and, and quite frankly, the most hours, you know, this era, this sort of you know and I, I will tell you what, this fucking non official launcher runs old versions of Minecraft so much more smoothly than the Minecraft than the fucking Microsoft launcher. So figure it out, Microsoft. Like what's his face? The dude from Valve and Steam Mr. Neckbeard Captain himself uh said that, you know, it's never it's never ever a uh a money problem it's a service problem and so like if you make it convenient if you make the service good then um people will be like yeah that's fine i won't complain about your fucking microsoft minecraft launcher you stupid microsoft and your stupid minecraft launcher that is terrible Anyway, um, yeah, night is falling, <laughs> so it is more than time for me to lay down a bed. Um, let's build another crafting table because we didn't learn from last time, and um, there's a thing that I want to do once I get my bed down here, once I make it through this night. The, uh, the one color only bed. Like, yes, you can have a bed, but guess what color? Okay.
Yeah. This is right. The launcher lets me change my um ID. <laughs> and so instead of playing as what I normally play as, which is Chkut, which most people cannot pronounce. <laughs> um Yeah. They're like, what's what's your username? Chquat? Chquatty? <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> You're not even close, friend. I appreciate the effort, but you are not as near as you think you are. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah, I got that coal. I, I gotta do a thing. Here, let me pause real quick. Okay, so while I was sober, I um went through it I added a bunch of topics that are either like icebreakery sort of topics you know like what's your favorite sandwich you know and then other ones like that are fucking uh controversial issue type questions like like why haven't we gotten a two-state system in Israel yet you know shit like that that I, whichever one it lands on, I'm going to have to talk about that while high as a motherfucking kai, as a motherfucking kai tonight, feeling pretty high. I am, it's true. Been hitting this sativa. Remind me of a girl I once knew. Her name was not Sativa. It wasn't even close. Oh, the higher education system of the United States. Shit. You done fucked up. You don't know what you just stepped in. Oh, motherfucker. Buckle up, motherfucker. Okay. I have a master's degree. Okay, let's start there. I have a master's degree. And I... People know me, they're like, you're a scholarly motherfucker. Like, you get scholarly on the shit. And I'm like, yes, I fucking do. <laughs> I read books and shit, you know? Like, I know a thing or two about the fucking world. You know, I watch the news. The news, actually, sorry, I not pronounce it correctly. Uh, and I... Fucking, I just, I know a thing or two about this world that we live in, you know? Um, and people all the time be like, hey, why did you not get a PhD? And the thing is, like, for a while there, it, my problem with grad school was not like, should I go to grad school or not? It was, I was definitely going to go to grad school. But... Uh, it was a question of what I was going to major in because, like, no matter what I did, I was going to be disappointing somebody. Oh, pig, you're a dumb fucking animal. By the way, pig, why are you not entirely delicious? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, look, here, here's the thing. Uh, pork rinds, you know? Uh, fucking, um, chicharrones, uh, yeah, that's what they're called in Spanish, I'm pretty sure. Chicharrones. Uh, good. They're really good. Like, just don't think too hard about what you're eating. It's literally fried pig skin, you know? But, like, good as a motherfucker. Um, the finger licking good. Like the first time I had pork rinds, you know, somebody was like, Hey, I got pork rinds. And I was like, what's that? And they're like, it's chips, stupid. Just eat one. And I was like, Oh, I love chips. <laughs> like I love me a good chip to this day. I love a good chip. And, um, I bit into it and it crunchied like a chip, but it was a flavor I'd never had before. You know, the delicious flavor of meat-flavored chip. It was like, ooh, hey there, little buckaroo. 
Want to be friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I talk creepy to snack foods. I'm sorry. Did you have these views of me that are not supported by the truth? Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> talk creepy to snack foods. Uh, that's what you asked me to talk about, right? Talking creepy to snack foods? Uh, no. You, you want me to talk about, uh, the higher education system in the United States? Okay. Not a problem, friend. Like, you think that I won't be able to do this? You are wrong. I totally can. So, there I was. Got my master's degree. Just kidding. We we skipped ahead. I did my undergraduate. Okay, let, let's talk about me in college in the first place. It will explain quite a bit. Um, so, first thing to know is that um, I oh, these are already jack of lanterned. What? Oh my god, pumpkins. Like, I didn't know. Like, I'm sure... Hold up. I'm positive that... Um, this must be... Yes, that is 100% a thing. Okay, well, I don't need all the pumpkins. Certainly not right now. Um, well... I don't know. I'll take the pumpkins. I mean, it's just one slot, right? They all go into the same slot. So whether you take all of them or one of them, it's the same. Basically. One item type. Anyway. um. So, yeah. When, when it came time to start thinking seriously about grad school, I had too many people pulling me in too many different directions. Um, cause like I, I started my undergraduate in theater and I like after a year in theater and really like going to my first theater, like collegiate theater competition and just realizing like there are some amazing actors out there that like no one will ever know them. They will be you know, waiters in LA <laughs> forever, you know, and no one will know like that they were a triple threat, you know, and that they, you know, got the lead in every play from freshman year to senior year and, you know, like whatever, like all the things that you can be amazing at. This is exactly what I'm looking for. It probably has a massive ravine running through it. Anyway, uh, so what I was going to say, uh, yeah, so, um, I, I had so many things that I could have done, you know, like, uh, I was a talented actor, you know, like, Still kind of am. I'm just old and doughy. <laughs> you know, how how those old and doughy types get a lot of roles. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I, I could still act. For the most part, probably. As far as I know, as long as I don't actually challenge myself to do it. <laughs> oh, look at this. Uh. It doesn't auto jump. This is pre auto jump, my friends. What? What a crazy, crazy time. Um. Anyway, so get back down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Better. Oh, orange flowers. Makes me feel like a Nederlander. 
you know, a person from the Netherlands because of the orange tulips. Anyway, I don't have to explain to you. Oh, but yeah, so I got my associates in theater uh, because, quite frankly, they paid the bills. <laughs> like, they gave me a full-ride scholarship, and not only that, but I was, like... They get, well, no, they gave me a full tuition scholarship. No? Room and board? No, 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 just full tuition. Uh, but um, the director there, in my first semester, having never had me as a student before, uh, he decided that... Um, that I was going to be one of the students who got the uh, uh, book allow allowance, you know? Because, like, my college theater professor was so excited that I was coming there. He's like, oh, my God, a real talent. We're going to do some shit with this guy. Um, w Wait a minute. <laughs> that what furnaces look like does it not have a mouth am i wrong was i because it has a mouth right okay good <laughs> it was like uh, i was certain i was dead certain that ovens had fronts on them um anyway uh yeah it, it dude it, I mean, how down does it have to be? Anyway. Because in the mountains, it seems earlier. It starts getting dark earlier. Anyway. Uh, I could probably kill... Like, there were so many sheeps around. I could probably kill a few more. Because it's like a butt ton of sheeps. Yeah, it's so many. And they're all white. I don't know, for some reason these sheep strike me as Mormon. They go to BYU, higher education in the United States. Hey oh, here we go. Uh so I had a lot of people telling me I should do this, telling me I should do that, you know, um, obviously my, uh, my theater professor was really sad the day when I walked in and said, I am no longer going to be an actor. And he's like, but acting's the best. <laughs> he's like, He's like, learn to be an actor and you'll never work a day in your life. Like, it'll, it'll be a joy, everything you do. And it was like, I, I appreciate that you feel that way, but like, I've got to be realistic about where I think my life is going to go. So, anyway... By the way, like, it's not like my, uh, cause yes, I was acting at community college, but you know, and, and when you're a big fish in a small pond, it's like, who gives a crap? Like how good were you really? Like <laughs> how good was I really in, in college? Uh, I, Irene Ryan nominated you know, in a play with 30 people in it, I was the only one who got nominated, so kind of a big deal, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, I was, I was pretty good. I was a pretty good actor. Anyway, uh, but still, I also realized that, that there are many people much better at it than I am. Uh, you know, and it's kind of crazy that I'm back in you know, like teaching theater, I would not have put myself back in it. Like I would not have thought, cause I, that was so hard leaving it. I had to amputate it like a limb, you know, like 
had to cut it off and then I still had like phantom pains. <laughs> you know. Uh what a what a rough thing. Anyway. Uh so yeah. That's where my higher education started was at community college and then I transferred to um a university and in doing so I got a community college transfer scholarship which paid for my tuition which is really cool if you are a community college transfer check your local university's scholarship board like this one when I was in college they did not have it on the website you had to ask for it in person and they would hand you a piece of paper which you would then return filled out by hand. And that's how I got that scholarship, which is crazy. I mean, that's, that's like saying, you know, like, well, first thing you do, you take out your old typewriter, you get yourself a nice piece of carbon paper, and like, yeah, that's right, snap the brim on your snap brim hat, and away we go. <laughs> like... What? What in the dingus? Anyway, so, yeah, like, I got a scholarship, but the problem was, is I didn't know what I was going to major in. And uh, so I just went to the campus multiple times and just wandered into counseling departments and was like, hey, um... I have credits in, like, pretending to be a tree for six hours, you know? I've got, like, a Ben Nye makeup caboodle, <laughs> and I know how to use it, you know? Meanwhile, while everybody else was going to real college, I was, you know, fiddling around in the theater department. And, and so everywhere I went, people are like, okay, so you have 57 credits of repertory theater that you collected over two and a half years at community college? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I do. Like, is that not enough? Like, <laughs> should I have, should I have uh, stayed in that failed production of um one one flew over the cuckoo's nest like i i thought it was gonna fail i did not think rick was a competent director like student director but the studentiest of us anyway you know what i'm saying real studenty notice i didn't say studious i, I mean of a student in a bad way. <laughs> like, you know, there's a student film and there's student film. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's the kind that makes it as a DVD extra and then there's the kind that like only gets shown in the classroom once and then is promptly buried. You know, it's saved on a thumb drive and then everybody is like, well, we, I think we can all agree we'll never speak of this again. Anyway. <sighs> That's right. Someone is spending money on film school right now. And they want to be the next guy that I also haven't heard of. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I forget to be impressed by things like that. <laughs> like, oh, right. That's a big thing in our culture. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot to kowtow to the idea of that. Anyway. Oh, he's very famous? Oh, that's right, I forgot. I give a fuck because I live in America. 
Right, right, right. Gotcha. Uh, boy, who can keep track and who gives a fuck? I, I think it's funny that, like, uh, all of my aspirations of a theatrical variety stemmed from my belief that I was not good at anything else. Not from my belief that, like, oh, the world needs my gift. <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, I knew I was pretty good. I knew people enjoyed what I did, but, like, I was never so far up in my head about it or so far up my own ass about it. Which is why I'm not, like, I was going to say I'm not still doing it today. No, I'm teaching, and I'm very happy to do it, but, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm teaching it at a high school. I think if I were teaching th theatrical arts, you know, having, uh, you know, uh, groups of aspiring, like, adults who aspire to community theater but are not there yet. You know, uh, just gathering in dark clothing in a darkened room and doing scene studies. Like, I, I would never be one of those. But, you know, being the Mrs. Willis to students that, you know, really need one. Because I needed Mrs. Willis and mine turned out to be the original Mrs. Willis. Yeah, that's right. That... Lady did me so many favors, like, just, you know, I, I got taken under wing and I got, you know, turned into a very different person than I was when I started. And, like, so much for the better. Some of it for the weirder. Actually, a lot of it for the weirder. But, like, so much for the better. So... You know, that that's kind of how I want it to go for the kids who come into my classroom. Anyway, so yeah, I, as I was in the university buildings walking from place where I thought they might give a fuck about theater to place where I thought they might give a fuck about theater, and, and generally striking out. And here's the thing that I didn't fucking think about is that, like, if you are behind in college, like, if you are not uh, caught up on your freshman classes when you are coming in as a transfer student, they have ways of catching you up. Like they can adjust your schedule and make it happen. You know, because you will not be the first community college transfer with a major change. You know, like you won't be. You can't possibly be. So like, yeah, I... But nobody said these things to me. Everybody just like... You get to university and it's like you go into someone's office and they're like, could you please get the fuck out of my office? Like, <laughs> I've got shit to do for the students that I'm required to see. I'm not required to see you. And so, like, get the fuck out. You're ruining my day. You know? <laughs> What's... Uh, yeah, in high school, your counselors are like, you can do it, champ. Let's let's apply to them big colleges, you know. And uh, they, they know you personally, and they're there for you, and, like, uh, all of that shit. They actually care about you. You see them around town, and they're happy. They wave. They say hi, you know. High school counselor. And then... A uh, community college counselor, like, they know who you are. They know your name. And it's kind of their job to make sure, you know, in order to keep the community college funded and, like, to keep their reputation going, they need to, like, have students do well. <laughs> and so your counselor at community college, like, 
he knows which classes you're taking. He kind of has a sense of, you know, how you've done in other classes. And he's, you know, looking to, like, have you make the grade so that he can make the grade, you know? Anyway. So, yeah, like... And then you get to the university uh, counselors who are like, I am required to handle students with last names A through D. So I will talk to you, but I'm not going to be happy about it. And we both need to know that. Like, <laughs> that is the attitude. Uh, I never saw a university counselor who was happy to see me. And and coincidentally, I lost a year of my life to some god-awful advice from a university counselor. Here's what they did. Uh, I'll try not to draw this out any longer than it needs to be. But, like... Um... <laughs> so... I'm uh, like, I finally uh, found the communication department and they're like, oh, we get uh, people switching out of theater all the time over here, which is true. Like, as it turned out, the communication department was staffed or like, I mean, yes, some of the professors definitely, but um, it was a lot of like all the students were like theater majors who realized like I'm not as good as the other actors in my acting class and I also don't think they're gonna make it therefore what the fuck am I doing <laughs> so uh, yeah like that's that's who switches majors to communication and guess what? As a major, it's basically worthless. Like, absolutely fucking worthless. Look, if you are getting... If you are getting a business degree, absolutely get a communication minor. Sure. You know, half the shit is built around business ideas anyway. And, um... Go for it. Like, hooray for you. Go, team, go be a businessman and a fairly well-rounded one, you know, uh, but if you are taking communication as a scholarly fucking thing that you actually give a crap about, first of all, as a scholarly field, it's fucked. Like they, they had one, like they only just started having theories. They are a social science whose first theory of anything came out in, like, 1987, you know? Which is way too late. <laughs> like, that means you're fucking, like... You're... I don't know. It's... You're too new as a discipline. Like, do you even count? people who get degrees in you are they able to get jobs if that's how young your theories are as a social science like what what are you doing so anyway um <sighs> communication uh, yeah, majored in that. Somebody should have told me not to. Just kidding. A lot of people told me not to. Um, but I didn't believe them because I, th like, no one explained, like, hey, fuck face. It doesn't matter what your credits will transfer to because so many of your credits are only applicable to, because I also, like, I also did all the choirs while I was there. Well, it was in community college. Yeah, that's right. Like 87 credits of acapella choir and choraliers. And they'd be like, what the fuck is choraliers? And I'd be like, what the fuck is choraliers? What the fuck is choraliers? Who the fuck do you think you are? 
to not know the premier collegiate show choir of this corner of this not the most populated of all the 50 states come on who the fuck are you <laughs> you know like uh anyway so yeah so many of my credits did not transfer and it wouldn't have mattered like i had like to technically when I left community college because of all the performing shit that I took, um, I had enough credits for like one and a half bachelor's degrees. If only those credits were the ones that you needed to get one and a half bachelor's degrees in anything, even theater, you know, like it's just, uh, it, it, it's like playing Tetris and, you know, you just keep getting SP. Wait, what? Already? Are you serious? I'm on six right now? Oh, that's right. Because I've gotten too used to the, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I need, this is the first time I've ever needed to go back up in a mine where I'm like, oh, I dug entirely too deep there. I just don't know what came over me. Oh, hold up. I need to also remember that I'm making a um, mini disc. Yeah. You know what's funny about this mini disc is that I tried this try first of all like uh whoever fucking made this web mini disc app you are and now forever will be the man like holy shit yes I'm putting Tupac on a mini disc what it's 2022 what year you think it is but like Net MD. I wish there was a version of this for high MD because I have a bunch of high MDs that I haven't recorded that I would like to record, but like can't, can't do it because they, uh, I don't have a, an app like this. I'd have to pull out my, you know, Windows. 98 laptop or whatever anyway no it runs windows xp that's right i have installed windows 98 on it it's just not that stable okay so i need to be on level 12 okay so the one just above that torch Anyway, uh, so yeah, like, who cares about which credits transfer? Ultimately, you should major in something that you feel good about. And, uh, yeah, the thing is, wait, one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. That is fine. Uh, the thing is, that after my first year of communication, I was like, ah, oh, son of a diddly. Like, I don't like this major at all, and I don't think it will give me a future. But I stuck with it. <laughs> I stuck with it because I was like, well, I'm almost done. Which is the dumbest reason to stick with something that you don't think you have a future in. Anyway, it just, yeah. Obscenely stupid. Um, anyway. Uh, oh, jeez. I've got a little cavern. Not much of one, but it is one. Anyway. Uh, 
So yes, um, got my bachelor's degree and like, oh, how did they cost me a year of my life? Uh, well, the nice lady in the counseling department told me, oh, I, I know you're coming here as a transfer student and you'll technically be a junior but you should not take communications 101 because that class is really hard because it's made to weed out the people who are not going to make it in this major, which like, who the fuck is that? Who would not make it as a communication major? Because here's the fun fact. Do you know who hires communication majors? There are two companies that hire communication majors. And I shit you not. Uh, one of them is Disney. So you can go work like... Um, the... Uh, how you say? Like... Uh, at the Disney theme parks. The... Uh, characters are very often uh fucking college communication students who like are either still working on their degree in communication or have just finished their degree in communication and so like yes what that means is that at one time they had hopes of being an actor, but that didn't pan out. So <laughs> then they decided like, oh shit, well, I will, I guess I'll do communication because that's where my credits transfer. And then when they got into communication, they realized, oh shit, this isn't even really a degree, like which we all should have known because uh, Andrew Walter, the quarterback at the time, who was then drafted into the NFL and became the worst quarterback in NFL, in, well, not in NFL history, but in the history of the Raiders franchise. Like, and you think about, like, they've had some shit quarterbacks. Like, oh my God. But this guy went on to be just the shit turdiest of them all and everybody was so mad at him like oh fucking leave town Andrew Walter anyway you know how those Raiders fans are very kind and loving they're known for their kind and loving nature shit what's alright god damn Already have things happening. Need to get some shit figured out. Gotta put down my... So those will be the two ovens. That'll be the... Because I do need to start getting shit out of here for... Getting it into chests. So that I can dig out the mine and go exploring and not lose my 22 iron because I don't want to lose that much iron that's a large chunk of iron to have at this point oh shit I did not mean <laughs> to make another furnace I was just trying to grab my materials because I was thinking about like how <laughs> it doesn't throw your materials back into your inventory. Anyway, um, let's put our iron in there. Because I need some iron to get those diamonds. Um, and this will be chest number one. This will be chest number two. Anyway, so let, let's finish this college story and try and end this thing before it hits an hour. Anyway, so 
yeah, there I was a communication major and, uh, you know, th there was this lady in the communication department who, like, well, first of all, everybody in the communication department is like, why are you in communication? Shouldn't you be in journalism? And that's true. Like, <laughs> uh, because people assume, like, oh, with a voice like yours, you're probably looking to go into broadcast journalism or something. You know, part of me always did want to, like, part of me always thought that, like, the ideal, the most ideal job in the world was to be Alan Coulter. <laughs> if you don't know who Alan Coulter is, I'm sorry that your life is sad, but it is, like, because Alan Coulter is a beautiful man. Um, <laughs> he, he was the, uh, the announcer on uh, Late Night with David Letterman. So that's where we get our Alan Coulter. Anyway. Um, should I put my... No, I'll put my pumpkins in the other one. Okay. Just put my random shits up here. Get myself ready. Okay. Try not to get too distracted. So... Ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, there I was uh, at the big university not enjoying my communication degree. And I even told a professor one time to her face, I was like, I did not know that this was a joke of a degree when I went into it. And, and she, like... <laughs> She was, uh, you know, she she was a um, adjunct faculty, you know, she which we'll get into here in just a second, and so she didn't even have her PhD yet. Uh, she was working on it, and teaching the class that I was in was part of her, um, you know, like well, it was part of her livelihood, but also. Part, well, it was her livelihood, but it was also part of the uh, requirement for her um, getting her degree. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, me telling her, like, I didn't know this was a joke of a degree when I signed up. And she's like, it's not a joke of a degree. It's a real degree. Like... It's a real degree. And I was like, yeah, real degree? Well, why is it <laughs> that the only person, because they had a job fair for the, um, they had a job fair uh, for the department and, um, Basically, nice. Um, I'll take 10 of them and I'll make them into sticks. Uh, anyway, so huzzah. Anyway, uh, blah, ba de boo. What? Look at how resource rich this is. What the junk, man? Was it always like this? Was Minecraft ever this magical? <laughs> like, I am having a dandy of a time, friends. This is taking me back places. Well, golly. Anyway, uh, my God. Oh, shit. That's right. I don't have anything else because I put it all in the chest. Okay. Let me finish this story. Oh, yeah. I, so, the only entity 
at the job fair for graduating seniors of the communication department. People who are like, this is their last couple of semesters and then you release them out into the world to go like succeed or fail based on the knowledge they have and the degree that you've given them. And, uh, yeah, you know who comes to the fucking, uh, job fair target. Yeah. Target the store target, like not some like target productions, you know, like, Hey, you know them, they made no, no, nothing like target the target that you go to when you go to target. Um, <laughs> that's who comes because they recruit communication majors to work in their HR department. So here's how this whole scam goes <laughs> is that, um, colleges will be like hey we should have a communication department and then um nobody says no and then they're like well then let's do it then and then they allow it to happen and it happens and then people get degrees in it and then, uh, the, you know, what did the what do the degrees get them the ability to do? Uh, to work for Target, like what? Yeah, to wear a red shirt and khaki pants to work, but also, you know, work in a cubicle, like not touching product on the floor. No, sir, we're fancy here at target human resources <laughs> and I swear to God like I uh, I just do not think that I could have spent my life just working at target human resources and being like no this is fine we'll call this a life <laughs> like and I hope that no one from Target Human Resources hears me say that. Because, like, I'm sure that there are people who could be like, yes, that's absolutely what I want to do. You know, you get job stability. It's a good company to work for. You get a discount at their store. You need to go shopping anyway. Bing, bang, boom. Working for Target. You know, <laughs> like... Cause a lot of the kids from my, from my graduating class did exactly that. They were like, well, I used to be goofy at Disneyland and, uh, yeah, when I was doing that, I was fucking the girl who plays bell and she looked just like her too, man. Anyway, well that's done. And, uh, me and Belle are married, and uh, her interpretive dance major is not uh, not going to be paying the bills. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to work for Target. <laughs> like, we're going to call it a life, and uh, it's good enough. Good enough. Anyway, I feel like I'm wildly insulting there. <laughs> Just like... Because, I mean, fuck. You know... Uh, who was it? The, uh, was it George Monbiot that came up with the idea of bullshit jobs? Or was it someone else? It's probably someone else. Um, but, yeah, like this idea that we have jobs in our uh, society that are just purely not needed. Like, nobody fucking needs that. 
And nobody needs to be doing that job because it just saps the energy of the soul, you know? <laughs> like, we don't need that. Anyway, so, yeah, let's get off of Target because I didn't want to work there. And I didn't, so that's good. Did not work for Target. Uh, so what did I do? Well, I stayed a librarian because, I mean, I had that Cush library job. And so I turned that sideways. Like I, I became a staff librarian there so that I could, you know, be a staff librarian. <laughs> Basically not have to leave college ever. <laughs> but also not become a college professor. You know, like that was the path that I was on. But I knew that I wanted to eventually do grad school. And I talked about it all the time. You know, sometimes talking about like, oh, I should get my uh, MLS, Masters of Library Science. Um, you know, should get my MLS. It was a really good program out of U of A, like it could be super easy. We could do it. Um, but yeah, like you get your masters of library science and then, uh, you know, and then that's what you're doing with your life. And it's funny because like, I love being a librarian. Like, <laughs> Being a librarian, especially being a research librarian, just a damn good time. Uh, like, really. Um, because you learn, like, okay, so I worked in an architecture library, and I am not an architect, nor was I an architectural student. I mean, that program is fucking nuts. I could tell you stories... Uh, that would make you think, God, I'm glad I never, like, went through with the whole, like, I don't know what, what to be, uh, I like drawing, but I guess I'm really only good at drawing straight lines, so, architect? <laughs> like, oh, shit, that's right, I don't need that many stairs, because I'm not digging down to negative 74 anymore, Ah. Uh, Shit, I'm over. I turned all my cobblestone into stairs. Anyway, so yeah, um, my communication degree got me into the library, and um, you know, my initial plan was to um, oh geez, everybody's dying. That's fun. Um. But my, yeah, my initial plan, uh, was to, uh, oh yeah, you did. I was, I thought you might come for me for a second. Anyway, uh, but I mean, my initial plan, I was going to either major in religious studies or, um, yeah, uh, religious Oh, yeah, this is before they even had drowned. Anyway. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it was going to major in religious studies, history, or anthropology. One of those three. Because what I wanted to do, like, nobody in the country offered Southeast Asian studies as a major. But you could, I did it as a minor. <laughs> And you can, uh, if you get a degree in history or religious studies or um, anthropology, that's how you really actually get your <laughs> get your degree in Southeast Asian studies because you know it otherwise doesn't exist. That's how you get your PhD in it, you know. And through my studies, like especially when I like actually went back to Cambodia and was, uh, you know, hanging out with people who, 
you know, had their masters and were getting their PhDs, they were, uh, ABD, you know, all but dissertation, uh, which is a period that can last for years. <laughs> uh, yeah, years slip by and you realize like, am I going to get this stupid thing ever written? Am I going to get this stupid thing ever, you know, defended and then published? And then once it's published, then fuck, I know what happens. I was a librarian. It'll go on a shelf, but no one will check it out. <laughs> The story of the guy who um, slipped a 20 into his own uh, master's thesis or doctoral dissertation. I don't remember which. Um, but let's say doctoral dissertation because it's still accurate. Um, but yeah, he, he put uh, $20 in there and... Uh, you know, every time he's back at his alma mater for a conference, he goes and he checks to see if the 20 is still there. It is still there. It's been like 30 years. <laughs> and in that amount of time, like, yes, the college has kept the book on the shelves as a reminder that, yes, at one time, this man went to school here and we taught him really smart i mean you think you see the student get taught smart we taught this guy fucking smart and uh then you'd be like oh what does he do for a living oh he teaches other people smart and the fucking thing that he knows that he learned from us and the circle is unbroken by anyway. So, yeah, it's true. Uh, but yeah, I'll be able to make two more. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I was looking to get my master's, but, um, couple things happened so I got married and then that made things interesting because like all of a sudden I'm not just living for myself you know like it's not just me and my petty interests it's you know our interests there was an us for the first time and you know having to make sure that that we are taken care of um you know so because going back to school that's a major financial decision and a major time decision you know uh and so yeah affects everybody and so you know having to make that decision together um Oh, more coal. But, yeah, like, you know, I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And, you know, the longer I thought, the, the more I was just still working at my job that I had been at for the better part of a decade. You know, the, the old library job. And... Um, yeah, thing is, the old library job, um, ran out, uh, dumb thing, we had a Republican governor come in, well, I mean, it's Arizona, so of course we had a Republican governor, but we had an especially awful one who, like, hated higher education because she didn't have a degree, uh, <laughs> You know how Republicans do very well with the less educated? Well, this woman herself was one of the less educated. Anyway, uh, so... Oh, shit. I was going to try and keep it to under an hour. Now we're just over an hour. Anyway, but she decided, like, the, uh, the universities put out their budgets... 
And she said no. Like the Board of Regents, uh, they they put out their budgets, and she's like, "Fuck you guys, <laughs> not giving you that kind of money." And they're like, "Uh, but we always get this money." And she's like, "Um, I'm a Republican. I don't give a fuck for education. Like, like I care about." All the unborn fetuses, but once they're on the outside of the womb, fuck them. And I don't care about their education. I don't care about their health care. I don't care about, you know, whether they live or die, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but I really care whether they live or die when they're not alive yet. Anyway. <laughs> oh, jeez. You silly goose Republicans. Anyway, um, Lordy freaking doll. I like that we are above the lava level. That's nice. I am well pleased. Okay. Um, I need to focus. I keep not focusing on telling the story. Uh, so, yes, um, I, uh, yeah, I kept wanting to go to grad school, but I didn't, uh, I pursued a form of teaching that didn't work out, uh, I end up not getting hired, I interned, but did not end up getting hired, um, you know, and normally would have, but there were a lot of, uh, this was, you know, 2008, so massive economic downturn. Thanks, Bush. Uh, like, it's funny how, like, people blame Obama for that. Like, oh, yeah, Obama, 2008, that's totally him. And it's like, no, like, that was happening when, like when he was getting elected like it was already there we kind of already knew what was going on um anyway but yeah like this is fun right before we had our first child my wife and i both lost our jobs uh, it's always a good time right before you have your first child. Just lose your jobs, both of you. Anyway, but that's the job I lost. Thanks, Jan Brewer. Um, terrible governor. Ugh, God, I hated her. Anyway, uh, and not just because I lost my job. Like, especially because I lost my job. Because I had worked there for a fucking decade at this point you know because eight years slipped through my fingers you know and i didn't realize that like oh shit you know my life is slipping away and i'm working at this job and like i'm only working at this job because i didn't know where else to go with my stupid major that doesn't help and uh anyway and, but it was all supposed to be a thing where because I was an ASU employee, I'd be able to get a discount on tuition and I could get my degree for free, my graduate degree. Uh, but yeah, like I never did that because I never like had the gumption to like really go after it. Because the problem was, I didn't know what I was going to do. Everywhere I turned, I had people who were like, Oh my god, if you don't go into voice acting, you're wasting your talents and abilities. You know? And then I had people who were like, Oh my god, if you don't go into you know, broadcast journalism, you're wasting your talents and abilities. And I had people who were like, Oh my God, if you don't go into religious studies and Southeast Asian studies or history or 
anthropology or whatever. Like, I had so many people and still had people wishing I was an actor and I still had, you know. So, like, everything that I did, I had people wishing that I would do that and make that my career. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, yeah, sure, obviously use my fucking talent in my profession. Durr. Of course I'm going to do that. <laughs> Why would I not do that? Anyway. But the fucking, um, how you say, uh, A couple of realizations came like um during this time my uh, i well i knew multiple people who got their phds and i was really jealous because i was like man that's what i should like if i hadn't wasted my time i would be getting my phd right now but now i'm gonna have to go back and get my phd and it's going to be so much later than it would have been, you know, and like I should have gotten it done sooner. But yeah, eventually we'll just all be the same. We will all have our PhDs, you know. Um, and the thing is that um, I watched all these people get their PhDs and I saw how the system works because the first thing is this, and this is really ragging on secondary education in the United States. Okay. Um, so first thing you get your PhD, let's say you get it from one of my alma maters, Arizona state university. Okay. Not a party school, actually a serious fucking, like, its reputation in 1987 is not what it is now. Um, I don't know why people are still like, ooh, it's on a state. Like, no, it's a, like, we fucking helped build the Mars rover, so shut the fuck up. Like, we have, we have a full-scale working model Mars rover in our engineering department because we had to have one to build the components that we were building for it because components that we built are on fucking Mars right now and they're still working. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, that's ASU. It's not fucking, you know, like, like I drank 17 beers and touched that girl's titty without asking permission. You know, no. No, that's, you're thinking that is definitely a, like, that's an SEC school. i tell you that right now. That is not a Pac-10 school or a Pac-12, sorry. I'm old. Used to be the Pac-10. That is an SEC school or an ACC school, and you know it. Anyway. It's a goddamn Florida Seminole. Anyway, <laughs> Florida State. Sorry. Because Florida's the derpy derp gators. I can clap my hands together. derp derp do. I'm an alligator. <laughs> oh, like I give a fuck about collegiate sports. I don't. I have not watched a collegiate sporting event. The fuck. I don't know, turn of the millennium. Like, it's been a while. Uh, and Because I started getting a degree, and then I got a job, and then I didn't have time for sports. So, yeah, like, basically, I watched all these people get their PhDs, and then um, you can't get hired by the institution who gave you their, who gave you the PhD. Because they need you to go outside of the university to spread their prestige so that people will be like, oh, this motherfucker graduated from Arizona State? Oh, goddamn. The quality of people coming out of Arizona State is astonishing. 
you know, that's what it's supposed to be. It's not. I, n not that Arizona State isn't exceptional and amazing, but it's that n nobody gives a fuck where you come from. Because if you have a PhD, guess what you're going to be doing? Adjunct faculty. And what is adjunct faculty, Pradell? Well, adjunct faculty means that you don't get tenure, which means that you are technically like on a semester by semester contract, which they can drop at any time for any reason. So like, uh, you, you would get offers to teach, um, you, you would get them like the month before the semester began typically because I've adjuncted, I've done some adjunct work. Uh, you get those emails like, you know, July, if you're starting in August and you get them December, if you're starting in January anyway. And, uh, basically what it is is they'll just be like, Hey, uh, we need you to cover this class. And you say, oh my God, thank you so much. Uh, oh, that's so nice of you. Can I have uh, health care or benefits of any sort? And they're like, N no. The fuck do you think this is? Look, you're teaching one class. So for your services, we are going to give you mm, between two and $4,000, <laughs> depending on where you live. <laughs> And I'm not joking. That's how much they pay you to teach an entire semester's worth of a class to potentially, like, I don't know, if it's online, they could pack that shit in. You could have, like, 40, 50 students, you know, uh, which is increasingly online, and they are increasingly packing that shit in. And so, um, yeah, for all of that work, you are paid, like... I was paid $2,000, exactly $2,000, and it was a pain in the neck to do that work, even though I was technically already doing it, because I was teaching it uh, to my dual enrollment high school students as well, like, at the same time that I was teaching college night classes as an adjunct faculty. Um, anyway... And it's funny because, like, they put me on the schedule and they had me on the schedule for a while and then they just didn't anymore. And I never found out why. And I was like, oh, shit, were they unhappy with me as an employee or whatever? Like, because I'm still teaching the high school kids, so they can't be that upset about it. Uh, you know, and, and I didn't know until this year. I was like, Oh shit, that girl who used to be the tutor is now like, you know, teaching full time for you. And so like, she takes care of those classes. And so I don't have to. Okay, like, sweet. You, you could have told me that, but like, you didn't because adjunct, you just either you get the call or you don't. So it's not the most steady gig because they can cut you loose at any time for any reason. Um, but that is how like 90 some odd percent of college classes are taught. And they are taught by experts, by motherfucking experts. Here's the fucking thing. Like most people don't understand what expertise is even fucking like. Okay, look, I will explain. Uh, you get your master's degree. And, uh, you know, your master's degree gives you a wide... Like, it gives you very detailed information that most people would not know in a very wide range of subject areas uh, for your discipline, you know? So you could be, like, really digging in the fucking trenches of grammar and, like, you know, on the front lines of 
the decisions that are being made. And yes, there are front lines of grammar. It's true. There are front lines of English grammar. And there are brutal battles being fought over correct English English usage as the language uh, has actually accelerated in changing itself over time. Anyway, so, yeah, is is a fucking thing. Uh, but if you get your master's degree, then you are doing a couple of things. Number one, you are typically teaching uh, the 101 and 102 classes of whatever your discipline is. Um, so, yeah all of a sudden you are above everybody else because you, well, this is going, let me like, did I put, nope, I just put book one, I put book two on there. Cause yeah, get picture me rolling on there. That's my favorite Tupac song. I know it's an obvious choice, total obvious choice, but whatever, like a lot of obvious choices. Anyway, uh, yeah, I gotta wrap this shit because I've gone a half an hour over what I already thought was too much. Nobody's going to watch this shit anyway. So, um, yeah, you get your PhD and you can teach adjunct. And then uh, how do you afford to support a family on $2,000 a semester? Because most colleges will only give you the one class for adjunct. Because they're just hiring a shit ton of adjunct professors who don't get offices <laughs> usually like don't get fucking digs of any sort D just you know get a blank slate classroom that they just come in and leave without you know leaving anything of themselves in it uh <laughs> you know it just is crazy it is absolutely nuts of bananas because like how you support a family is that you teach, maybe you'll teach the 101 and 102 for the institution that you're at physically. Maybe you'll teach actual in-person classes there, but you will pick up uh, between three and five other classes um, at other institutions, which means that it is between three and five other colleges <laughs> that you are also working at and also not receiving benefits for working there, you know, like dental. Nope. <laughs> How about n nothing? How about you work here and we make you feel like you're the luckiest son of a bitch to work here until one day when you just actually it's funny. Like I wouldn't even get a call that was like, Hey, you're on the roster. I would just look when the college catalog came out and see if my name was in it or not. Because one time it was in it for a class on campus in another town. And I was like, I, I'm i not at that learning center. Like, I, I can't teach there. I can't make it, you know. <laughs> like, I can't just leave my day job and then book it like an hour away to be there in time for my own night club. Like what the fuck are you doing? And I told them and they were like, Oh, you didn't want to. And I was like, no, you never asked. And like, I don't want to drive that far <laughs> anyway. So 
yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. This is kind of ridiculous. Um, and so being adjunct is like being nothing. It's a lot like being nothing. Nothing of importance whatsoever. Nobody gives a fuck. You essentially do not matter to anyone for any reason. Um, and if you died, then they would be like, uh, now we gotta get someone to cover his class. Shit. What's the janitor doing? You know, <laughs> like, uh, so undervalued are these poor fucking adjunct faculty. And like, I had it pretty good because I had a steady day job that was already paying me what I felt was an adequate wage which like i mean teachers were so fucking stupid financially like you only become a teacher if you're not good at business <laughs> because business people don't become teachers what that doesn't make sense um but for real though like teaching is a terrible financial decision um uh, <laughs> given how lowly we regard it in this country. Um, anyway. Oh, shit. Now it's past an hour and 30. Okay, let me just stop right here. I'm just going to... Why am I still on F3 this whole time? Too high to craft. God damn it. Anyway, but here's the problem with higher education is that we create experts but we won't support them you know we won't like tenure track jobs like i don't know how colleges keep getting more and more expensive because they are not putting that money into you know the pockets of uh you know wildly capable professors those wildly capable professors are treated basically like shit. Um, I mean, the fry cooks at McDonald's have more uh, have have more of a feeling of like security in their fucking uh, life and livelihood. You know, in terms of like, will I have a job tomorrow? Yeah, because I work at McDonald's. <laughs> like, as long as they don't, like, fall into the fryer head first, I'm going to continue to be gainfully employed at McDonald's. And adjunct faculty don't even have that much. Like, understand that that is true. Uh, and so what does that do to all these experts that we created. You know, which like, I never finished my thing on expertise. Like you get a master's degree and uh, you know, you have knowledge that is, you know, a mile wide and a foot deep. You know, you get a bachelor's, it's, a, it's half a mile wide and an inch deep. Master's degree is a foot wide and a mile deep. And um, a doctorate degree, you've already got the master's, and now you get a degree that is like uh, six feet wide and a hundred feet deep. <laughs> you know, I know more than every other human on the planet about this specific fucking thing that I'm going to write into a dissertation and nobody is going to ever look it up because nobody is ever going to challenge the throne of guy who knows the fucking most about this specific thing. Like you want, you want to, Oh shit. God damn. Where'd you come from? What? Where did he come from? That didn't make no sense. How am I getting mobs in my... 
shit. Anyway, uh, yeah, we have these experts and we do not take care of them. So there are people who have the broadness of a master's degree where they just generally know a lot of shit about their field of study. Um, they just know a shit ton about it, like way more than a bachelor's student would know. Like that, that's what a master's student is, is somebody who just knows it a fuck ton more. And, um, you know, same broadness as a bachelor's degree, but like so much deeper. And, um, and then an expert is like so deep. I mean, it's funny because like through my master's degree, I have like <sighs> knowledge of multiple, like, <laughs> okay. So if we're talking literature, uh, English literature, like, um, I have knowledge of a broad range of English literature, uh, Native American literature, African American literature, um, Chicano literature, uh, you know, and a lot of historical classical type literatures as well. You know, I just, I have a broad uh, uh, knowledge base. That's the word I was looking for. I have a broad knowledge base with all of these fucking things. But uh, if I got a PhD, what I would have is a very wildly specific knowledge base of one aspect of all the shits that I have known as a master's student. So, like, for instance, you know, I did my uh, master's capstone thing. Like, I did my... Uh, one, two, three... Um, not a thesis per se, but, uh, it's very similar, <laughs> basically, um, different requirements than a thesis, uh, but similar process. Anyway, regardless, uh, so I did mine on the messianic, uh, symbolism in um idols of the king which is a arthurian legend it's written in epic poetry form anyway very good book very interesting book not a lot of people writing about it because most people will never read it because it's a bit of classic literature that like nobody gives a fuck about like everybody is always like oh Tennyson ooh, <laughs> you know but like ultimately nobody gives a fuck anyway so that's like I am a mini expert in that book and specifically in the messianic symbolism thereof um yeah I know a guy who his master's ridiculosity was um, the uh, TV and film adaptations of Henry James novels was his uh, was his area of focus. It's like, oh, bro, that's this wicked specific, nicely done nicely done uh but if you were to take it as a phd level like the master's thesis is the most wildly specific part of the master's experience um phd is like all of that like is 
is basically all thesis, you know? So, um, but it just goes much deeper and it's similarly with, so like, uh, my brother-in-law is the most knowledgeable person in the world about the uh, World Parliament of Religions at the 1865 uh, World's Fair. You want to know anything about that gathering of religious leaders? And, you know, a weird beginning to the business of ecumenicism. Yeah, you want to learn about that shit? He is literally the dude you go to because he knows more about that shit than anyone. Uh, because nobody else was studying it and he did his uh, dissertation on it. So now he is the most knowledgeable person in the world on that subject. So, you know, like, kind of a fucking thing. And the fact that he almost, like, he was an inch away from having to go to fucking, um, yeah, he, he was an inch away from having to go private sector. Also, here's another one. Uh, my cousin um, got his PhD in history. This is a guy with one of the greatest analytical minds and greatest memories of anyone I've ever known. Uh, like, he was teaching me to play D&D, &D, except he was like, uh, you don't really need the rule book. You just need to know how to track stats. And, uh, and then he starts teaching me about Thacko, which like, that is a grognard way to play. Uh, for those of you who know what Thacko is to hit armor class zero, uh, what a crazy concept you play What armor class have you hit? 12, my lord. No, <laughs> you wouldn't say my lord. It'd be funny if you did. Anyway, regardless, yeah, this guy, super analytical mind, a uh, very bright individual, um, degree in history, uh, and you know, PhD in history, absolute expert, um, in his field, and do you know what? He now runs a bookstore. Because, you know, being an adjunct faculty and teaching, you know, five to, you know, like three to five um, history 101 courses per semester just to, like, keep the lights on uh, wasn't good enough of a life. Like, it, w it wasn't paying the bills. You know, like there was a really eye-opening instance where this woman who was widely regarded, widely published, uh, widely quoted, expert in her field, um, she died and n nobody knew about it at first because she lived alone and people were concerned she hadn't been to work they put her on the schedule and she didn't show up you know and uh they were like what the fuck happened to this woman they eventually found her in essentially a hovel of a one bedroom apartment she was a leading expert in her field. She was well known and highly regarded. And she was living like she fucking flipped burgers for a living. Expert in her field. 
you know, like what's my problem with higher education in America it's that we make experts, but we don't value them. And then you wonder how we get into this fucking problem where we have people who don't believe science because they don't understand it. You know, meanwhile, you know, it's hard to get people who are good at science to go into teaching to teach science so that people won't be so fucking stupid about science. Uh, but we don't value experts in this country. And so we don't pay them to do the shit that so desperately needs to be done. <laughs> like, how did we get here? Well, uh, we let a bunch of idiots and assholes underfund some of the most important shit. And here we are. Good, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um I have felt great while recording this. And I don't know if was it good for you. <laughs> I mean, right? Was it was it fine? Were we all right? Did we pull this train into the station? No, I agree. An hour and 46. Shit. I've got school tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen. This will have been it. Thank you for your cooperation. I will see you in the next whatever the fuck. Okay. Bye.